Hi, I'm Scotty from the future, and I actually wrote this script weeks ago, uh, obviously before the announcement of the legendary encounters, so that changes a few things that I talk about. So I'll be in touch throughout the video to add some extra flavor, but enjoy the video. See you in a bit. Hi, I'm Scotty, and today we're talking about the future of Shatterpoint. We'll address your comments from previous videos, talk about the things that remain on the problematic list for me, and then I'll give my hopes for the game's future and my opinion on its trajectory. That's my opinion! But before we get started, I want to make something exceptionally clear. I'm a huge fan of Shatterpoint. I played it since the beginning, I want it to grow in my local community, and it's one of the most fun miniature games I've ever played. If you're considering getting into the game, do it. Unless you hate fun. In that case, go play Warhammer. Spend 200 bucks on a core set for Shatterpoint, and you've got enough for you and a friend, or keep it as a board game. You can't go wrong. That being said, I still do have some issues with the game. Well, I, I can't even really call them issues. More like neutral thoughts, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First, let's kick things off with my deep, dark past. About a month ago, I made a 10 minute long video about the current state of Shatterpoint, where I gave my perspective as someone who loved the game at launch, fell off the wagon for a few months, and began the process of spinning back up to full knowledge. Well, as full knowledge as I can get, I'm- <laughs> Since I try to keep things short around here, like me, there were some generalizations that I made to fit the timeline of the video, and that may have caused it to come across more negative than I intended. My sentiment was and still is very positive. The game is currently my favorite mini game out there. A lot of you liked the video, and you showed it. I got great comments about your communities, what you like, what you don't like about the current state of the game, and there was also some of you that didn't like it. Which is fair, I'm by no means an expert, and I'm pretty open about that, but let's take a look into the comment section. That's a lame bit. Let's start with a comment from one of my favorite channels here on YouTube, Aegis Brand Studios. First of all, thank you for commenting. I love the feedback, and honestly, not only was this comment on point, it was also very constructive. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I guess I'm rating comments now, so leave one below, and I'll, I'll respond with my rating. Aegis Brand wrote out a very thoughtful response that, in summary, said my concerns were surface level, but hinted towards some of the larger issues that the game may have, which may be overlooked by people highly invested in Shatterpoint. And I think this is a totally valid point. I'm very much a casual when it comes to Shatterpoint and in most games in general, but here's the thing. I represent the majority of potential and current tabletop gamers out there. As Aegis Brand pointed out, if you want your game and community to grow, you've got to interact with the filthy casuals like me. Next comment. The first thing I'll say about Joe's comment is that he certainly watched the video. Love it. 10 out of 10 comment. Joe also brought up some good points, and I responded to them in a reply comment, but what I want to highlight here are the points that mission packs don't feel the same, and that I should play enough games to discover the difference. First of all, the mission packs do feel the same. Secondly, if I have to play several games to feel a difference, it's not different enough. There are only minor changes to the functionality of each mission pack, and it follows the same flow as Phase 1, no priority, Phase 2 and 3, yes priority. Of course, the objective layout changing will affect which units can reach them first, but to me, terrain has more of an effect on the teams I bring than the mission pack. Call me crazy. Next comment. Patenta here hit on what I think was my most worrying point, that the singular game mode felt repetitive, and if people didn't like it, that's all there was to the game. And I was wrong here. I'll admit it when I make an oopsie, and this is one of those times. Key Operations is available for free on AMG's website, and it adds an asymmetrical PvP mode with more thematic elements. This is exactly what I was looking for, and the best part is that there's more like it coming. More on that in a bit, and huge thanks and shout out to Batenta. Hi, future Scotty again. As past Scotty pointed out, there's more like it coming in the form of Legendary Encounters. Legendary Encounters is a new three-person game mode for Shatterpoint that allows players to act out iconic scenes with characters like Anakin and Asajj Ventress. The way it works is one player is a galactic legend, a super overpowered single character unit trying to accomplish a mission. The other two players, also known as the strike team, control a cadre, which consists of two secondaries and two support. So you've got four secondaries and four support on the strike team total. It's the strike team's job to thwart the galactic legend. I'm trying to keep the video short, so let me know if you want a how-to video on legendary encounters, but it boils down to a one versus many version of Shatterpoint that honestly I'm super stoked for. So now that I have several games and hours of research under my belt, and by researching I mean watching Aegis Brand's battle reports, I do stand by a lot of what I said in my original video beyond what was covered in the comments. First of all, this is an objective-based game with random activations and low lethality. In fact, AMG wears these adjectives like badges of honor, and they have every right to. They're challenging the miniature gaming status quo. If you only want to kill your opponent or just knock them off the table, this game's not for you. 
Secondly, Shatterpoint is not as deep as some of the other games out there. Is that a bad thing? Absolutely not. In fact, I mark it as a good thing, especially when you take into account all the strategy that is packed into these little 90-minute games. Sometimes you don't want to sit at a table for four to eight hours. Last, missions aren't changing, at least not anytime soon. There are definitely three more mission packs coming, but it's all going to be more zone control according to AMG themselves. That doesn't mean that there's going to be little fun, exciting twists to each, but it does mean that the flow will still be get to a point and hold it. So that brings us to present day. With more games under my belt and more game modes out and playable right now, I think the future is really bright for Shatterpoint. The release schedule seems to have a nice domino effect where strong medalists are constantly being combated by new units introducing counters. And honestly, I think AMG is getting pretty inventive with the new game modes, even if they are a bit derivative from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Either way, the love for the game is strong. So where do we go from here? Honestly, to your local game shops. Go invite people to your games. Throw newbies in on a legendary encounter. Have them in a cadre so they could team up on a more experienced player. Host a paint party to show that painting minis is not torture most of the time. But most of all, go out there, play the game, have fun, take it easy on the casuals. Except me. Let me have it in the comments. I live for the heated discussion. Also, I respond to every comment. Eventually. Well, that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.